We've already seen how resonance leads to stabilization through the delocalization of electrons, or charge. The charge distribution of a molecule can also be affected by its sigma bonding network and the electronegativity of atoms within the molecule, and this is the basis of inductive effects. In essence, atoms within molecules can donate or withdraw electron density through their sigma bonding network, which is distinct from the resonance picture which typically involves pi-type orbital overlap and pi electrons. Inductive effects lead to stabilization or destabilization with respect to processes involving changes in charge at nearby atoms. Take, for example, an electronegative atom X that's near another atom Y within a molecule that could engage in some process. Because X is electronegative, it will draw electron density towards itself, leaving the atoms nearby more positive in charge than they would be in the absence of X. This tends to make it harder for the Y atom to become positively charged itself, and so stabilizes the Y atom against processes in which a pair of electrons is donated away from the Y atom, in other words, in which Y acts as an electron source. On the other hand, processes in which Y gains negative charge through the donation of electrons to Y become more likely. In other words, the Y atom is destabilized with respect to processes involving Y as an electron sink. We can make the same sorts of arguments for an electropositive atom A connected to a nearby atom B that can engage in some chemical process. Electropositive atoms donate electron density rather than withdraw it. And as a consequence of this donation, the atoms nearby are more negative than they would have been in the absence of the electropositive atom A. This makes donation of electrons away from the B atom more likely because B is now more partially negative than it would have been in the absence of A, and electron donation from A makes the acceptance of electrons, atom B acting as an electron sink, less likely, because B is already negative. It doesn't want to accept more negative charge onto itself. To summarize, an electropositive atom A destabilizes nearby atoms with respect to acting as an electron source, and stabilizes nearby atoms with respect to acting as an electron sink. Specific examples of molecules characterized by inductive effects are shown here. In the first case, this carboxylic acid molecule bears a fluorine near the carboxylic acid functional group. The fluorine pulls electron density towards itself, leaving the carbon here more positive than it would have been in the absence of the fluorine. And that effect extends to a diminished degree, but still an important degree, across the other atoms near the fluorine. At least two to three atoms away, we see effects of the withdrawing nature of the fluorine atom. So this carbon here, the carbonyl carbon, is more positive than it would have been, and even the oxygen becomes more partially positive than it would have been. If we consider the loss of this proton from the carboxylic acid functional group, this involves acceptance of electron density at the oxygen that becomes formally negatively charged. And we can ask about the favorability of this process versus the same process in a molecule where that fluorine is missing, for example, where we replaced it with the essentially electroneutral atom H. Is this molecule, the fluoroacetic acid, more or less acidic than unsubstituted acetic acid? Well, because the fluorine atom makes this oxygen more positive than it would have been in the absence of the fluorine, that increases the acidity, increases the likelihood that this proton will be lost to put a negative charge on this oxygen atom. One way to think about this is that the fluoroacetate anion is more stable than the simple acetate anion due to this inductive effect. As suggested by the arrows here then, the fluoroacetic acid is more acidic than simple acetic acid, and this conclusion is based entirely on the inductive effect of the fluorine atom. Silicon is a famous example of an electropositive atom, and it donates electron density to nearby atoms. For example, this carbon here with the delta negative shown, and even atoms beyond that, such as the carbon and nitrogen involved in this CN double bond. This carbon and nitrogen are more negative than they would have been in the absence of the silicon group. This makes this nitrogen's lone pair more basic than a comparable structure that lacks the silicon group. And this effect is due entirely to the electron donating nature of the silicon atom. Focusing on the effect of electron withdrawing and donating atoms on charged species specifically, we can state the following stability trends. 
inductively withdrawing atoms, these are electronegative atoms like fluorine, bromine, chlorine, etc., stabilize negative charges and destabilize positive charges. We saw this in the last example in stabilization of the fluoroacetate anion with respect to the acetate anion. Inductively donating atoms, these are atoms like silicon and most importantly for us actually alkyl groups are inductively donating, stabilize positive charges and destabilize negative charges. And if you think to the second example we just looked at, the conjugate acid of the neutral structure would have been positively charged, and it's the stabilization of that structure that results in increased basicity in the neutral molecule containing the silicon atom. Although the stability trend refers to charged species, we can often use it to draw conclusions about neutral molecules that could be converted to charged molecules through, for example, gain or loss of a proton. So, for example, an equivalent question to the one shown here, which alcohol is the strongest acid, is which of the conjugate bases of the molecules shown, which I've drawn out in blue, is the most stable. Inductive effects are additive, meaning the more electronegative or electropositive atoms you add to the structure, the stronger the effects. We can see this in partial charges within the neutral molecules. Here's the alcohol with one fluorine. Notice that the partial charge on its oxygen atom is negative 0.744. Here's the alcohol with two fluorine atoms. And based on inductive effects, we should expect this oxygen to be less negative due to the withdrawing effect of these fluorines. And in fact, we see that the partial charge here is negative 0.737, slightly more positive than it was in the one fluorine case. And finally, if we look at the alcohol with three fluorines, we should expect an even more positive partial charge at the oxygen here. And in fact, that's what we observe. The partial charge on this oxygen is negative 0.726. That shift in partial charge from more negative to more positive correlates with the trend in stability of the conjugate bases and acidity of the starting alcohols. The most stable conjugate base is the molecule bearing three fluorines. The least stable conjugate base is the one bearing only one fluorine. Focusing on the acidity of the neutral species, we can draw a conclusion about their relative reactivity. Because the trifluoroanion is the most stable, the neutral molecule is most acidic of the three. And because the monofluoroanion is least stable, the monofluoroalcohol is the least acidic of the three. Notice here again that the lesson is focus on the charged species. The neutral molecules in these three cases are of comparable stability. Their differences in free energy are negligible compared to the differences between the ions, shown here. Notice that in going from A to B to C, from the least stable to the most stable anion, the free energy goes down. And that results in a lower climb in free energy in going from reactants to products. This is why we see an increase in the favorability of the alcohol acting as an acid in going from case A to case B to case C. The inductive stabilization of the anions is really what's driving the trend.